Now that we can recalibrate classified items on the PTS and properly create builds, I've been testing and messing around with all the new boosts and bonuses that each of these classified gear sets come with. And, as most of the time, there are some things that I want to talk about, that I want to go over. Don't worry though, it's, it's mostly positive, I'm not going to go on a rant here. Uh, the classified gear sets actually provide the player with a lot more power. It almost feels like we're back in patch 1.1, where Striker, Sentry and Tacticians were first introduced and pretty much doubled the power of your skills, or more than doubled your damage output. But instead of just increasing your raw stats, these classified gear sets bring more power to the player in the form of utility, more situational buffs that you can try to proc while playing, and more gameplay mechanics that make the game itself a lot more interesting. However, it's not all perfect either, there are some things that in my opinion could use some tweaks, but hey, that's why it's the PTS, so we can all try these things out and properly give feedback. In this video, I'm gonna give my feedback, so uh, let's begin. I think it is best to start off with the classified striker set as most people are already kind of familiar with how this works. This set has received a lot of attention on YouTube from the first week of the PTS simply because it was obviously too strong and it got a lot of people talking about how the PTS is broken and that kind of stuff. Anyway, we're now in the second week of the PTS, the numbers have been adjusted, they've been dialed back down and I feel like that Striker is sitting in a really good and well balanced spot as a result of it. The 5 piece bonus for Striker gives the player 10% stability and 5% enemy armor damage, that is of course in addition to what the 2 and the 3 piece already gave you. And the 6 piece bonus adds a self healing bonus to the player that is increased per bullet that you land and then multiplied by the amount of stamina that you have. That sounds a bit complicated so to put it in uh, human terms what it does is that it basically adds another striker stack counter underneath your health bar which can be filled up to 100. And the closer you get to 100, the more your character will self-heal every single second. Then the self-heal also gets stronger depending on how much stamina you have. And just like the normal striker stacks, if you stop shooting, you will lose one stack every second. From what I can tell, this set is going to be very empowering for the solo players in particular, allowing them to spec for a good amount of stamina and a good amount of firearms, completely ignoring electronics and still have enough self-healing and sustain to make it through difficult PvE content and maybe even allow them to play PvP without the need of any electronics whatsoever. Basically, what players were able to do in patch 1.5. PvP is a bit riskier though, because the EMP effect, the disrupt debuff, removes the self-healing completely, so it resets the stacks back to zero. So if you go into the DZ and you come up against somebody using the EMP sticky, then you might run into a little bit of trouble. However, on the flip side, the self-healing stacks are also not removed if you miss shots. So as long as you don't get hit by an EMP effect, you can spray and pray with a Nomad build on steroids. It does leave me with the feeling that I as soon as this new striker set is introduced, I see no reason for anybody to ever take Nomad anymore. It is simply outclassed in every way by the classified striker set. Now that doesn't mean that I think that the striker set has to change, uh, it just means that we are in for a Nomad rework further down the line. One last thing that I quickly want to mention before I go to the next gear set, and you'll probably hear me say this multiple times throughout the video, even though I'll try to keep it to a minimum. But I believe that uh, because of the way that a lot of the six pieces work, that uh, I'm going to talk about soon, for example, the six piece for the striker, the EMP sticky bomb will be a very dominant skill for PvP in 1.7. I think a lot of people are going to run around with that skill and groups might even pick up one, two or three of those. Now, I don't think there's something wrong with that. It's just changing up the meta a little bit. Some skills are always going to be more powerful than others in different patches. However, I would like to avoid going into a patch with yet again another skill hurting the gameplay experience. And I believe that the stagger effect on the MP sticky is a bit too much. We all know that being staggered in PvP is not a very fun thing, uh, especially when it is unavoidable. And with the EMP sticky already, uh, well, applying the disrupt effect for 12 seconds on all players and all skill objects in the radius, it is powerful enough without the stagger effect added to it, at least, again, in my opinion. I just don't want to see every group running this skill at least twice or three times and then end up with a stagger spam fest that nobody is going to enjoy. Again, this isn't just because of the striker six piece, there's more to it, more gear sets are going to promote more usage of the EMP sticky, uh, but we'll get to that soon. First, let's talk about the next classified gear set on the list, 
Final measure. Final measure right now is pretty much everything that it needs to be to be a cool and powerful gear set. The five piece isn't all that strong. It adds 15% exotic damage resilience and another 15% protection from elites. However, the six piece is pretty strong because it gives buffs to the whole group depending on what type of grenade that you defuse. An EMP or a shock grenade boosts everybody's skill power by 15% for eight seconds. A frag or incendiary grenade boosts everybody's weapon damage by 15% for 8 seconds. And a flashbang or a tear gas grenade boosts everybody's armor by 15% for 8 seconds. Of course, it has to be noted that the grenade defuse thing doesn't really work on friendly grenades anymore. Which is good because that used to get in the way more than it helped. But this also means that of course, players will not be able to proc these buffs anymore yourself by throwing a friendly grenade underneath the, the final measure user. After a little bit of testing with these buffs, I did note that the armor, the 15% armor buff that players receive for defusing a tear gas or flashbang grenade, seems to be multiplicative though, which does mean that it's very weak compared to the other two type of buffs. Of course, players only have 35% armor to begin with, and 15% of 35 is nothing more than 5.25. So it changes the armor for the squad from 35% to 40.25% for 8 seconds. And of course, that is in the last stand. It's even weaker in the normal game where the armor isn't 35%. Again, this does seem a bit weak to me. I'm of course not asking for a survivor link type of damage mitigation amount every time that you defuse a tear gas or a flashbang grenade. But I think that a small boost on this one certainly will not hurt anyone. I also want to give big compliments to the developers for actually showing which type of buff you have at the moment when it is activated. You can see a firearm, a stamina or an electronic symbol right above the player, which is exactly the type of clarity and identification of buffs that I've been asking for for a long time now. And, uh, and this time, I didn't even have to ask, it was just there, so I'm very, very happy with that. The fact that this gear set does work properly now, and the fact that people will be running this, it does mean that players won't be able to rely on their EMP grenades anymore, so to apply the disrupt effect, people are, again, going to run around with the EMP sticky bomb, which isn't a bad thing, again, it just means that, you know, I would like to see the stagger removed from it for the reasons that I mentioned earlier. The classified version of Sentry is amazing for PvE. The 5 piece gives the player 15% more accuracy and 15% extra headshot damage. And the 6 piece allows you to mark targets up to 6 marks. And every time that you land a headshot on a target after the third mark, it has a 25% chance to spread an additional mark to other targets within 10 meters. Also, when you're shooting a target that already has 6 marks, you gain an additional 100% headshot damage to that target. Uh, but it has to be noted that the 6 piece only works for PvE, so versus players it would just be as if you're playing with the 5 piece. I'm not going to lie here and just say that this set actually makes me want to create a dedicated PvE build to see how far I can push this. The 100% extra headshot damage is going to be crazy good versus bosses in difficult content such as heroic incursions or legendary missions, which we also need more of by the way, just saying massive. And if you don't have that much damage yourself, it will at least still be very helpful for the team because the marks also applies for your teammates, just like as with the four piece. I don't have much to add here, uh, I would say leave this set exactly as it is and make a lot of players very happy. The classified version of Lone Star is the first set that I really just can't see myself using too much as far as the 6 piece bonus goes though. The 5 piece is actually pretty good, it adds another 50% ammo capacity, 8% shotgun and 8% LMG damage on top of the 8% that we already have from the 3 piece, so that's 16% extra damage in total. And although the 6 piece is pretty cool on paper, its practical use leaves a lot to be desired in my opinion. It says that when your weapon has 25% of its ammo left in the current magazine, there is a 50% chance to receive the Berserker buff. This bonus will activate once you fire the last bullet of your magazine, and when it activates, it instantly refills the magazine with 15% extra weapon damage and 25% increased rate of fire, and also 15% decreased accuracy and stability. Now, when you proc this buff, I'd have to admit that you kind of feel like the Terminator, and in combination with the tech link, you can reach weapon RPM amounts of up to 1500, basically drowning your targets in bullets. However, the weapon also instantly becomes incredibly difficult to control, even with my mouse and keyboard. And I, I had trouble keeping the reticle on my target at times, so I can imagine that this is only going to be more difficult for players on consoles when they're playing with a controller. However, that's not even the biggest problem that I have with this gear set. The major thing that I want to talk about is the 50% chance of receiving the buff. When I spec six pieces into this, this one 
fantasy gear set. I don't want to have a chance to activate anything, right? I don't want to go through five magazines without activating it once and then getting the buff nine times in a row back to back half an hour later. Of course, those are both very extreme examples, but they're certainly not impossible. This can really mess up the player specking fully into a six piece bonus and then not getting the bonus in a moment that it really matters. I personally, I would much rather have a cooldown on it, much like the 4-piece Nomad, where it can only activate once so many seconds, or even once so many minutes. And then I know when I can use it, or when it is on cooldown. Or even better, you can let the player work towards it. After X amount of bullets hit on enemies, you are able to get the buff. And of course I say bullets, but for shotguns it would then count per pellet, just like as with any other gear set in the game right now, such as tacticians and striker and that kind of stuff. Anyway, what I'm getting at is that I want the player to know when the buff is going to be procced and when not. I don't want to have a 50% chance. I kind of want to use it like a, a pocket tech link. It's not as good as a tech link, of course, but I kind of want to use it as an on-demand buff. A 50-50% chance it just isn't that appealing to me and I'd wish that they changed this because Lone Star has been a set that I've been wanting to use for a longer time now, however it's it's just never been really good. That I was too strong in patch 1.6 and so now the developers have made it so that the 4 piece with the 100% crit chance only works when the player is using cover. In addition to that they also decreased the accuracy and the stability on the SVD which was the weapon of course that was very powerful in combination with the Deadeye and I think that this actually puts the Deadeye in, uh, in, in the right spot. It's very hard to say exactly how strong Deadeye is at the moment. We would really have to play and test a lot more, but I think it sits in a good spot. The 5 and the 6 piece bonuses, they do make the set even stronger. The 5 piece adds even more initial bullet stability and another 20% critical hit damage. And the 6 piece is a bit tricky to use, but it also comes with an enormous payoff. Basically, if you kill somebody with a headshot while scoped in, your critical hit damage will keep increasing by 20% every second, and this can go all the way up to 100% extra critical hit damage. You will of course lose this buff when you either exit cover or scope out or wait 10 seconds until the buff is gone. So yes, to use Deadeye you have to be pretty stationary right now. But the potential damage is still there. I for one really like what they did to the 6 piece bonus because uh, the developers have found a way to add skill into this set, more player skill. Which has of course always been a big complaint, you know the fact that headshots on a sniper build do not matter. Uh, but the developers have been able to make headshots matter now without changing the core of what this gear set is about. Also, another compliment to the team for actually adding visual indicators of all these buffs. You can even see a bar next to your scope when you're zoomed in, which represents the extra critical hit damage from the 6 piece, so you know when you hit that full 100% without even looking at your health bar. Again, more ease of use and more clarity, which is exactly what this game needs. In combination with the SVD and a strong smart cover or talent such as Steady Hands, you can still kind of spam shots and mow people down with it. I have a terrible SVD on the PTS with a terrible talents and a terrible that I built and the time to kill and accuracy in my case was still, it was still pretty quick. Um, so I'm not sure if that's going to be an issue, but on the other side, I'm also thinking if you're able to get a good flank on a Deadeye user, he will most likely not survive either. Reclaimer is the set that I kind of have a love-hate relationship with. On one side, the 6-piece looks really, really strong with the increased healing speed, the increased health on the box, and the increased revive time, and on the other side, the support station itself is still quite buggy and the chance of you instantly getting the support station back, which is also part of the 6 piece bonus, is in total conflict with how most players actually should be using the support station. For those that do not know, it reads out that the support station gets 25% chance to have no cooldown triggered when it is destroyed by an enemy. And this chance is increased by 2% for every 1000 electronics that the player has. First and foremost, again, this is a chance mechanic, something that I'm not very happy with. But this time it's even worse because it requires the player to completely ignore the master mod for the support station. You know, the thing where if you blow it up instantly it provides everybody in its area with a burst heal equal to 33% of their maximum health. That thing. If you use this, if you manually destroy the station, then the 6 piece bonus will never proc. Because to proc it, it actually has to be destroyed by enemies. Now in my opinion, uh, the chance to instantly get your cooldown back is simply not worth not using the master mod. I would much rather, just as with the Lone Star, have a cooldown for it like the Nomad 4 piece that can maybe skill with electronics if you want to do something like that. 
and then players know when you will get the cooldown back or not after it is destroyed. You can also make players work towards it by having enough seconds of uptime on the support station. Maybe after every 60 seconds of uptime it instantly resets the cooldown the next time that the station gets destroyed, either manually or by someone else. Something like that, that would really empower the Reclaimer user, because once every minute you can use this to counter any MP effect on the station by blowing up the station and then instantly placing the other. Or the player could blow up the station and then instantly place the next one deeper into the enemy lines for if you want to make an unexpected push. On top of that, I also mentioned that it was a bit buggy just a minute ago, and when I said that I was mainly talking about the fact that it still heals at an inconsistent rate. Uh, as mentioned in my massive please fix video, this has most likely a lot to do with the change to the support station made in patch 1.6 where players can only receive healing from a support station once every second to prevent the mass stacking of support stations in last stand. However, if the healing rate isn't properly fixed by the time that the classified reclaimer comes out, then I'm very afraid that we will not see much use for this set. No one is going to spec 6 gear pieces towards a skill that isn't really working properly. It isn't all buffing Reclaimer I'm going to ask for though, because yes, if you fix these bugs, and yes, if you make these changes, those things would quote unquote buff the station. There is no denying it that. But, and this is the nerf part of it, I also believe that the revive time shouldn't be as short as it currently is with the 6 piece. At the moment, the reduced revive time can be used to cheese more difficult PvE content by reviving yourself and your teammates over and over and over again, and we basically run into the same thing as we had in patch 1.4, where players just equip Battle Buddy as a talent, and then use that to walk over NPCs completely as if you were God. Not something that I really think is intended. I wouldn't say cut out the increased revive time completely, as I know that a lot of people are very enthusiastic about that, uh, but at least cut it down a bit, make it 20% increased revive time or something like that, because right now the revive time is, is simply too short, it's too strong. Other than that, I also want to mention once more that uh, sets such as the Reclaimer are going to enforce a lot of players in PvP to use the EMP Sticky as a means to counter it. And again, this is the last time I'm going to say this in this video, but I strongly believe that with so many players that are going to run the EMP Sticky, I believe that the stagger effect should be removed from it as it has a lot of potential to be the next thing that could ruin a lot of the PvP experience. But yeah, that's all that I have to share for today though. Of course, this is just my feedback from my point of view and my PTS experience. If you have a different one, don't be afraid to share it. This has to be an ongoing conversation to ensure that patch 1.7 will be as good as possible. But yeah, with that being said, I'm going to see you guys later. Or, like they say, in the Netherlands, see you later.